the tragic story of Cat Stevens. Now, I know I reacted to some of his music. If you search my name and his and put reaction after that, something should pop up. If not, that means it was blocked. Um, again, we're back on the Grunge channel, man. I told you, you just come over there, click on the video, and yeah. Shout out to all the good humans. Link is always in the description for those who are asking. Um, I just want to see. I like to have information on artists because it'll give me a better understanding when I listen to their music. You know how you do a reaction and you, you or you listen and you be like, dang, like did he, this is this something he went through or is he singing about somebody else's story? You know, you just it's always good to have some backstory. It is it makes it more relatable. So we ain't gonna waste no more time. Let's jump right into it. Outcast, alienated, and almost literally lost at sea before being outcast again. Here are a few tragic things about Cat Stevens that you may not know. Born Stephen Demeter Giorgio in 1948 to a Greek Cypriot father and Swedish mother, Cat Stevens was exposed to many cultures and religions at an early age. His parents owned and lived above a Greek restaurant in London's Soho district. Inspired by big Greek weddings, Nina Simone, and musicals he overheard across the street, young Stevens soon developed an aptitude for music. He began learning piano and guitar, inspired by Lead Belly and the Beatles. Lead he admitted Belly. later that it was a lonely life, with his unique heritage isolating him from his peers. He had dreams of becoming a painter or cartoonist, but he struggled with less creative subjects and became something of a troublemaker. Telling Stereo Review Magazine in 1972, In school, I was the artist boy. I was beat up, but I was noticed. He also never felt particularly masculine. Telling Melody Maker Magazine, I saw these idols like Spartacus and Kirk Douglas, and I thought, I'm not of that. When I was very young, I never really felt one sex or the other. Gradually, I was brainwashed into thinking I was a fella, but maybe when I write a song or a story about a relationship, it has many more areas. Cat Stevens started performing songs at local bars in the early 60s under the name Steve Adams, and it wasn't long before he caught the ear of local record producer Mike Hurst, who signed him to Decca Records. So he's changed his name because. I know his name is like Yusuf, like it changed his name like three times. Hopefully they'll go into the story of that. According to a 2002 interview with the Australian Women's Weekly, Stevens chose the catchier stage name Cat Stevens because a girlfriend once told him he had cat-like eyes. Mm. By 1966, he had scored his first hit with the offbeat love song, I Love My Dog. Stevens' original career plan was to write songs for other artists. His 1967 song, The First Cut is the Deepest, became a smash hit for soul singer P.P. P. Arnold and countless others over the decades. But with the 1967... Oh, P.P. The first cut is the deepest day. Soul singer P.P. P. Arnold and countless others over the decades. But with the 1967 release of his album, Matthew and Son, he became a bona fide pop star by the time he turned 18. The introverted Stevens was thrown into a hectic world of non-stop interviews, production, and performance. That year, he embarked on a tour with Jimi Jimmy. Hendrix, which introduced him to a destructive lifestyle involving smoking, drugs, and alcohol. Oh, In a 2020 interview with The Guardian, he admitted to drinking to ease extreme stage fright and later wrote in his 2004 essay, How I Came to Islam, they made me larger than life. So I wanted to live larger than life. And the only way to do that was to be intoxicated. Cat Stevens' first album, Matthew hey. and Son, saw immense commercial success on Decca Records under the direction of producer Mike Hurst. Naturally, Hurst was eager for a similar follow-up, and that's where the trouble began. As Stevens told Vox Pop in 1972, it's not as easy as that, because the songs aren't like that. Life isn't like that. You just don't do the same thing over and over again. It was just a business after a while. The whole music element, the thing that made me want to create music, was suddenly shoved aside. Stevens sought a more authentic folk sound, while Hearst pushed for more polished pop songs with heavy instrumentation. In 2004, Stevens recalled to Classic Rock magazine, There were a bunch of musicians in the studio who interpreted your own music for you. It seemed to me that I had to get more control. 
The result of this tension was Stephen's second album, 1967's New Masters, which failed to live up to the hype of its predecessor. Dang. Hearst later admitted to making mistakes, noting the intense legal battle that ensued, telling renowned music journalist Chris Charlesworth. And speaking of masters, man, shout out to all the artists who own their music. Y'all just don't know how. Woo, that is so important, man. So important because you you have control. You know what I mean? There's so many artists that don't and they don't they don't know up from down. We did the second album with lawyers actually in the studio. It was horrendous. Hearst explained to Cherry Red Records in 2020 that everything was eventually settled out of court and Stevens was released from his contract with Decca Records. In 1968, at the age of 20, Cat Stevens' pop star lifestyle caught up with him. Everything that one could do, uh, I think I did it. After years of overworking Man. himself, smoking and drinking heavily, and enduring a stressful legal battle with his record label, he fell dangerously ill. He lost an alarming amount of weight and developed a persistent cough. He finally sought medical advice after he started coughing up blood. Mm. Stevens was diagnosed with advanced tuberculosis, which had caused a collapsed lung and severe pneumonia, and was immediately hospitalized. He spent three months in intensive care, suffering through painful lung procedures, and around a year recovering from the life-threatening illness. Stevens told Charlesworth, TB ruined my career and put a halt to my dream. Hey. I was back on earth, stuck in hospital, and that was a big lesson. I had a lot of time to reflect. Death was on my mind. During his long convalescence, he wrote around 40 songs, which would provide the material for his next three albums, 1970's Mona Bone Jackin' and Tea for the Tillerman, and 1971's Teaser and the Fire Cat. In 2021, he told Goldmine Magazine that the despair-laced song Trouble was directly inspired by his struggle with tuberculosis, its title and lyrics being a play on TB the colloquial term for the illness. Shortly after recovering from tuberculosis, Cat Stevens met American model and actress Patty Darbinville at a party in London. As Darbinville recalls in an interview with famous groupie Pamela DeBar in her book, Let's Spend the Night Together, mm. she found Stevens approachable and became close with him after the two rode a roller coaster together. They dated for around two years, watching the 1969 moon landing and spending time in his red painted bedroom, which contained only a bed and a piano. Darbinville's career frequently forced her to travel extensively and eventually into the arms of Mick Jagger. Oh. Heartbroken, Stevens penned the haunting ballad, Lady Darbinville, in which he professes his love to her corpse. Darbinville admitted to DeBar, I cried the first time I heard it, because that's when I knew it was really over. Mm. Stevens' relationship with Darbinville inspired a few other songs as well, including Maybe You're Right and most notably, 1970s sweet and candid Wild World, which became a breakout hit for the newly reinvented Stevens. When he was 25 years old, Cat Stevens put himself in voluntary exile. Having become a superstar with several successful albums, he began to feel lost and uninspired in the bustle of fame and excess. See that right there? Lost and uh, that is so important, man. So important. And I feel like when you're doing stuff that they want you to do versus what you want to do, that all that is so important. I love that they said that, man, because that's what I be talk what I be talking about all the time with these artists, man. Do what you love. Albums. He began to feel lost and uninspired in the bustle of fame and excess, mm. and suffered an identity crisis. Yes. I mean, I left uh, music, the music business in a way, not just music, but um, because I'd f I'd wanted to get my life fixed. Music is a luxury. Donating yes. his tax money to children's charities rather than the British government, he moved to Brazil and did some soul searching. He told Melody Maker magazine in 1975, I had a house there and I stayed alone. I couldn't even talk to the lady who cooked and kept the place clean. I really felt alone and it hurt for a long time. He also shaved his trademark long curly hair and beard, rendering himself virtually unrecognizable and visited politically and socially troubled places like Ethiopia, Bangladesh and Kenya in order to explore his humanity again. The result was 1973's Foreigner, an even more stripped down departure from his previous work. The album centered around the theme of being misunderstood, and Stevens recorded songs with local musicians and produced the entire album himself. He told Melody Maker, 
To be able to write with feelings, you have to know yourself. Writing has to be an affair with yourself, and you have to be able to live with yourself and get through all your hang-ups. And I did. In 1976, the same year as his explosive Magic Cat Earth Tour, Cat Stevens experienced a pivotal moment in his life. Alone on a beach in Malibu, California, he decided that the water looked inviting and went for a swim where he found himself caught in a dangerous riptide, which was quickly pulling him out to sea. That's me. As he told KQED's Michael Krasny, After I was swimming for about half an hour, I couldn't get back to shore. At that point, quite simply, there was no one to help me. I said, Oh God, if you save me, I'll work for you. And at that moment, a wave, however big it was, came from behind me and pushed me forward. And suddenly I had all the energy I needed. It was a miracle. Shortly after the near-death experience, Stephen's older brother gifted him a copy of the Quran. He told The Independent in 2020, It became the gateway. After a year, I could not hold myself back. I had to bow down. In 1977, Cat Stevens surprised the world when he converted to Islam, and again in 1978 when he changed his name to Yusuf Islam. Yeah. Stevens chose the name Yusuf after reading about the Quranic prophet Joseph, finding the parable in which he is sold like a commodity similar to his own experiences in the music industry. But the biggest shock came in 1979, when he decided to quit making mainstream music. Though being a musician was not expressly forbidden in Islam, Stevens was already disenchanted with the music industry, fame, and the rock star lifestyle, yeah. and chose instead to embrace a more conventional existence. Stevens told Chris Anderson during a TED interview in 2017. So if you'd have listened to my lyrics, <clears throat> you would have heard that I was on a path, and I was definitely looking. He continued, and if I was sincere at all about what I wrote, it meant that if I found something, I'd have to grab it. Otherwise, I'd be a hypocrite to myself and to others, and that would be a bad example. Fully committed to his new faith, Stevens sold all of his guitars and donated the money to charity. In 1979, statement immediately afterward clarifying his opposition to the fatwa, but this received little press. Nonetheless, the public's outrage was great. Stevens' music was banned from many radio stations, mm. DJ smashed his records on air, and 10,000 maniacs removed their cover of his song, Peace Train, from their catalog. Rushdie made his feelings on Cat Stevens clear. And I mean, there was a point when I was a college student when I had a copy of Tea for the Tiller Man, yeah. you know, but uh, he's not, he hasn't been Cat Stevens for a long time. Accusations. Sheesh. Yo. Woo-wee. That, the, the, the last, like, couple of minutes of this video oh my goodness so him and his wife been married for 44 you talking about somebody just finding themselves my goodness man that's why i talk about all the time is people be so lost they have no identity they just do what other people think is best for them but this brother has found himself my goodness man that was crazy so he said something and they combined it with something else he said and just put whatever, just all had it all out of context. That happens a lot, all the time. That's why you got to be careful when you're interviewing and talking to people, man, because I feel like a lot of times people have this agenda of a way they want to portray you to people, you know. Dang. That's crazy. This was a very informal information uh uh interesting intriguing video shout out to the grunge channel again appreciate you guys coming over and watching man that is gonna do it peace out